Hey, this is John with Two Moose Home Inspections. Welcome to part 10, part 10 of learning about your well. Where we last left off, we were just learning that three gallons per minute is pretty ideal, but that is like the bare minimum where we want to be. And so what we did was we just ran a stress test for two hours. And at that two hour time frame, we checked how much water was passing through. And we're constantly checking that every 15 minutes to make sure we have good flow, consistent flow. We don't have any issues. There's no air being sucked up by the well. We don't have any problems like that. So we now know that we have passed the test. Congratulations. We did two hours. We were above three gallons per minute. Everything is amazing. Okay. Well, let's say we passed the test by hitting two hours, but we were only at, you know, two gallons per minute or one gallon per minute. Well, then our recommendation would be that you get some kind of water storage system. So that way you have that water on demand as you need it. That would be our recommendation. Now, beyond that, um, let's say that you have a well and it ran dry. So sometimes wells that have run dry before are going to have a piece of equipment like this one right here. And so this piece of equipment is basically going to turn off the well. So what will happen is whenever you take your straw and you put that straw into that milkshake and you suck really hard and you stop getting milkshake and you start getting air, well, you just so quickly, you just sucked up so quickly. And so same thing on this type of a, a device right here, if it notices that there's a change in the electricity that is going through that electrical wire, it's going to shut it off and it's gonna say, hey, listen, buddy, you're sucking up air. Let's just give it a minute. And then you can manually turn this back on. Normally by shutting this off, and then turning it back on. And then if the well is in under normal circumstances, then this device will allow it to continue and do what it does. So let's say that our well has run dry. All right, well then we're gonna indicate, we're gonna say, okay, the well has run dry at, um, you know, 35 minutes, well ran dry, uh, test failure, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so why did the well dr run dry? Well, there's a few reasons. So if we take a look, it is possible as we talked about right here, that we have our 12 gallons per minute of water that's coming into uh, that's coming into this area. So we have our 12 gallons of, of water per minute coming into this area. But is it possible that our pump is not able to do anything? That our pump kind of gets um, air locked or, or has some other kind of issue where it can't actually pump the water? Yeah, it's totally possible. We, we could have plenty of water coming in. But the reality is, is that normally what we have is we have a flow that just is not adequate. So we just have a flow that, that is not good enough. Okay, so the flow is not good enough. The well ran dry. So why did the well run dry? Well, maybe, maybe let's just say that in this particular circumstance, we have five gallons of water coming in. And that's great that we have five gallons of water coming in um, because that's perfect. But why did the well run dry? Well, maybe the well ran dry because we have this pump right here and the pump is pumping at seven gallons per minute. So if we know that the pump is pumping at seven gallons per minute, then what that means is that we have our seven gallons per minute. And so then we have basically a deficit. We have a de deficit that we know we have five gallons of water coming in, seven gallons of water going out. That means we have negative two gallons per minute. So that means that depending upon how much water is inside of there, because we have, um, water inside this water table and this water is an entire column filled up with water and so we can start pulling water from the pipe before we ever pull water from the outside soils and so that negative two gallons per minute maybe that's adequate to get us through um you know get us through that two hour test or maybe we were already right at the level of how much water can be produced versus how much water we have and so then that's why the pump is uh making the well run dry because the pump is running faster or is more powerful than the water that can come in now that's great that's neat like that's a definite possibility but again my my results are it either passed or it failed I don't really care about the hypothetical. I don't really care about, I guess, this theoretical of what is the theoretical yield. Well, in this case, the theoretical yield um, was that we should have come out of here and we were getting, um, sorry, we were getting five gallons per minute. And so we were getting five gallons per minute um, of our water, but then the pump was pumping at seven gallons per minute. Well, if I did a test and I was able to determine that we were getting five gallons per minute worth of water. And so one of the ways that they do that is that you'll have uh, professional well companies that will actually drain everything. And then they measure how much water is in there and how quickly it refills. And they can tell you the exact gallons per minute of how much water is coming back in. So great. I have all this gallons per minute, how much water is coming back in. But the problem is, is that my pump was pumping at seven gallons per minute which then means subtract seven gallons per minute equals a negative two gallons per minute. And so if I have negative two gallons per minute 
uh, doing what it does, that that's terrible because even though theoretically I had a company come by and they did this really expensive test and they popped the cap uh, on the top of this well, which I don't really recommend because anytime that you open this to air, you now have the opportunity to have contaminants go into this area. It could be bacteria, could be chemical, could be any kind of contaminant going into your drinking water. So opening the top of this is not really ideal, but these professional well companies will come in and they are going to test and see how much water this well is actually producing. But again, if I have a traffic jam here, if I have a traffic jam here, if I have any other issue with any part of my system uh, as a whole, then knowing that the well can produce five gallons per minute is awesome. But at the end of the day, if, if doing this type of a test fails, that's the reality. You might have a sports car, but can you actually drive that sports car on the highway at sports car speeds? So then the next thing is, is that they will say, ah, okay, well, what we're gonna do is we are actually going to test. Um, we are going to attach a device and this device is going to give us a reading and the reading is going to tell us exactly how many amps. So how many amps we have uh, being drawn by this particular well. And that's awesome, you know, cause you can, you can definitely see whenever something should not be where it is as far as how many amps are being drawn. And you can say, oh, this is healthy or unhealthy. But the thing is, the very first thing that should happen is that you should, whenever you install the well, you should have somebody with a big Sharpie write down the 7.213 amps. Like, let's say that's what the, the value was. So now somebody wrote 7.213 amps on the wall right above this right here. And so what that is going to do on the day of installation is going to tell us that our particular well under load was producing 7.213 amps uh, of electricity. It was, it was drawing that amount of electricity. And so then what will happen is, is that somebody will come over and they will run their little tester and they will say, ah, you know what? The test came back as 7.213 amps. Okay, so I uh, came back at 7.213 amps. And you know, most manufacturers say that, uh, well, uh, technically you should be at uh, eight amps. Okay, but I'm at 7.231 amps. And whenever it was first installed, it was 7.213 amps or whatever. So that means that it's actually correct. It's the way that it was designed by the manufacturer. So really without knowing the specs, without knowing the exact specs of, of the type of water pump that was installed, you may not know for sure, am I getting the correct amount of amperage? Now, obviously, there are times where it's like, oh, it should not be drawing this many amps. There is there is a power leak, there is a failure, or oh, it should not be drawing this few amps. Uh, that means the motor is not spinning, it's not working the way that it's intended. There are times where that really does make sense. But if either of those things were happening, if either of those things were happening, then what would happen is that whenever we are running our test, we are not going to be getting the amount of water that we should be getting. We might be getting maybe two gallons per minute, maybe one gallon per minute. That's That would be one really good way to know. So the, the reality is, is that unless, unless somebody actually took the due diligence to write down the number of amps that your particular model, make, model, manufacturer of pump is using, then it really doesn't matter what the amperage is. Because if there is a large or small number, which would be an indicator that something is wrong, not a definite telling you something is wrong, well then you're gonna see that uh, with the amount of water that is able to be produced because then you aren't gonna be able to produce the amount of water that you wanna produce. So then, okay, well let's say that we pay for the really expensive test uh, and they, they pop the top right here and of course they do all the, the EPA guidelines on decontamination of well water and they follow all the procedures, all the steps and all that and they've opened this up, exposed it to natural air, not a problem, like because they will follow the correct the rules to, to do things correctly. And they are able to tell you, by golly, you are able to produce five gallons per minute right here. Okay, so now they just told me I'm able to produce five gallons per minute, but because my pump potentially is running at seven gallons per minute, I have a pump that will run this well dry in an hour and 20 minutes. So if I have a well that is running dry in an hour and 20 minutes, but I know it can produce five gallons per minute, sure, now I'm without water, I just wait for a little bit of time, and then boom, I have water again for another hour and 20 minutes, and then I have no water, and then I wait, and then I have no water, and then I wait, and then I have no water. You can live your life like that, or you can say, wow, our home inspector found that we do not have enough um, water. And because we do not have enough water, what I want to have done is that I want to have um, the homeowner, uh, or I want to negotiate, to have the homeowner 
pay for a specialist to come out. And whenever that specialist comes out, then what will happen is that um, the specialist is going to say, oh yeah, your well is producing a great amount of water, but it is the pump that is bad. Oh yeah, your pump is amazing, but the well's not producing enough water. Oh yeah, we just need to add a water storage system. Oh yeah, maybe it is that we have um, an issue with your pipes. You have galvanized pipes inside of your house and, and they just, um, just like having bad cholesterol or plaque buildup inside your arteries, it is now constricted to the point that we aren't getting the water flow that we wanna get. Oh yeah, it could be these million other issues that we have going on. But the reality is, is that first you want the home inspector for a lower price to say, is the well working ideally or is it not? Because with any of these tests, there is no guarantee of future operation or future good operation of that particular well. Um, but if let's just say hypothetically that the well does fail, then hopefully more than likely you have a pitless adapter and the replacement should not be that difficult. Nobody has to dig a pit and everything is good to go. And it kind of brings it all back uh, to where we started. So the main thing to keep in mind is that if you are getting your well tested, you can pay an exorbitant amount of money to have the well um, tested. You can pay a very little amount of money. You can pay for two moose home inspections to do the inspection. Um, but the main thing to keep in mind is that what you want to do is test the well, because as soon as you take ownership of that house, whatever the problems are belong to you. Before you purchase the house, you might have the opportunity with the help of your realtor to negotiate for a better price or for a repair if there is something found that is wrong with your well. And again, I want that practical, not theoretical. I want to practically know that this, this well is able to, at my faucet, give me this amount of water versus uh, theoretically it could produce you know 20 gallons per minute. Right, that's great in theory, but what I want is the practical application of how much water do I actually get. So I think that pretty much concludes everything we have to talk about today uh, on wells. If you have any questions, comments, uh, if you would like to schedule a home inspection, any of those things, please visit Two Moose Home Inspections. Have a wonderful day. Recording. We are recording. We should stop recording.